Troubles in the capital, the Beitar Yerushalayim soccer team is facing uh, one of its uh, most difficult periods in history with a huge professional crisis, but towards a major economic crisis. The club has in recent days begun a unilateral release of players. The Jerusalem team is looking for someone to for buy it and help fans. it climb up in light of the growing sexual and financial scandal of owner Moshe Chogeg. But this too is not working out so far and fans... Well, they're simply worried. So for more, let's cross now live to Effie uh, Gorodsker. If I'm pronouncing uh, your name incorrectly, please correct me. A uh, lifelong fan of the team and also anchor of uh, Hapod Ol HaKadur, Al HaKadur, sports broadcast. So Effie, thank you for your time. Help us uh, clear the clutter, the club facing troubles in multiple arenas. Let's start with the not so successful search for a new owner. What's the latest? Yeah, well, for right now, what I've understood is that I think Moshe Hogek has finally understood that he's not going to ask for money, but just someone who can um, fill up all the um, the chovot that we have right now, which is a big issue. We're talking about about twenty-five to thirty million dollars in in debt that the team owes. They have to find someone who's willing to take that upon themselves, and that's not something that's easy to to do. But also, and this is the biggest problem, right now all of Hogeg's accounts are take are confiscated by the police. So mm. there's not much that we can do. So he can't use his money to help the team financially. And nobody can really do anything about it because it all belongs to the police right now. So we're in sort of like a... You know, it's a lose-lose situation at this point. Yes, uh, indeed, and the, the, the implications are immediate because three foreign players have already been uh, released and salaries aren't paid. Where are we heading? Well, the truth is that so far, every penny has that's that that players should have need to get have got like every salary has been paid so far. Um, they're saying that from now we might have an issue. I don't know about that a hundred percent yet. Um, they say that there was, they found someone to, I think, uh, donate like three and a half million dollars. That should help for, I think, a month or two. But again, we're going to go through this every month now, trying to figure out how um, we'll get the stability to finish the season. Yeah. You know? and, um, and, and theoretically speaking, uh, can uh, players uh, uh, launch a boycott? Is that something we see in soccer? Is that effective at all? They can try and strike. A I strike, think. that is. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're talking about some kind of strike, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I mean, I hope it won't happen. I don't I don't really know. I I don't remember ever seeing anything like that, at least not in Israel, so I really can't tell you. Mm. And what about fans? You're a diehard fan. I assume it's really heartbreaking to see your team at this uh, position. What are you guys trying to do, if anything? Um... Oh well, yeah, it's definitely hard. I've I've seen a lot of bad times for Betal, unfortunately, over the years, but nothing has been like this, where you just really don't know what's going to be. You don't know what the future is going to hold. So it's a really big issue. I know there have been some kind of different um, fans that try to uh, come up with um, a fundraising yeah. opportunities, but it seems like there are a lot of different fundraising people trying to fundraise, yeah. like three or four different ones, and they're very, not working um, together, um, so nothing's coming there's, out of there's it. No, there's, no, yeah, there's no collaboration and nobody's working together, and that's, that's not going to help either.